So, ähm, wir mussten hier gerade so ein bisschen was umstrukturieren, aber es wird jetzt ähm, einen CEO-Talk geben und zwar zu den Chancen der Digitalisierung. Und um, now we're going to have our CEO talk on uh, the chances on digitization. And therefore, Mr. Sundar Pichai, I would like to ask you to please come up on stage. Uh, please also come Tim Höttges. And I would also like to uh, welcome the moderator. This is Professor Wolfgang Walster. Herzlich willkommen. Hallo. 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 Wir müssen über das... Good morning. My name is Wolfgang Walster. I'm the head of the German Research Center for Artificial Intelligence. And uh, the two distinguished uh, speakers today are both related to DFKI because they are shareholders. We have an in intensive uh, cooperation with both Google and, uh, of course, Deutsche Telekom. So we have only 15 minutes. So my first question is just what is your personal experience and also what does it mean for you personally digitization? You Sunda, know, first. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you for having me here. Uh, it's incredible to, be, uh, to see how yeah. in Germany uh, the industry and policymakers and academia are coming together on such an important topic, so it's a real honor to be here. Uh, for me, uh, digitization I think it's very personal for me. Uh, you know, I, I grew up in India, and we got, uh, you know, phone when I was 12 years old, uh, and it was we had to wait four years uh, to get a phone. And when I got a phone, I could clearly see how it changed my life. Uh, everyone in the neighborhood would come to my home. We would use the phone together, and so I really understood how digitization, uh, you know, changes your life. So to me, it means bringing technology, uh, computing, and connectivity, uh, and the skills to go with it to every person, be someone in rural India, someone in Saarland, or in London. And that's what digitization means. Thanks. And for you, Tim? The first thing is that um, the first time I see Sunda with a tie, have you bought that in Germany? <laughs> <laughs> so we appreciate that. It's an honor to the German audience here that you are wearing a tie. But anyway, so uh, that said, look, uh, when I have to admit, when I was young, you know, I was um, addicted to science fiction. And uh, I loved, you know, Raumschiff Enterprise, which was Star Trek that time. And, you know, uh, there was a lot of technical features um, which I found, you know, uh, fascinating. For instance, the tree coder. Remember that tricoder of Scotty? You know, he was always checking, you know, every kind of minerals or metals or, you know, whatever it was to check out what the thing is. And, you know, now these things are real. So science fiction is turning into action. We see every day this kind of old movie stuff, which is becoming real. There's this famous movie of her, mm -hmm. you know, where, you know, a man falls in love with his operator. Um, Honestly, this could happen because the operator will understand me. For the first time in my life, somebody understands me. So, um, <laughs> so you know, so this is something which I found <laughs> fascinating um, uh, that this science fiction is now becoming real. And the second thing what I find uh, amazing is, at the end of the day, everything was there already. A lot of things are recombination of things. Um, and this is something where people worked on software agents, others on recognition, uh, pattern recognition, others worked on process um, technologies, others on computing power, and uh, others worked on, on uh, big data um, uh, allocation or gathering. And now these things are coming together and suddenly it's a product. Suddenly it's becoming something which is substituting human works or uh, making my life easier. And that is for me, the recombination is what, what fascinates me in this world these days. Why is artificial intelligence and machine learning now so important all of a sudden? And uh, especially AI, I know you are very involved in this. What is your perspective? You know, we are uh, seeing, uh, we've been talking about machine learning and AI for many years. But over the past few years, uh, we've started seeing a lot of progress. Uh, just yes, uh, two days ago, I was in London and we announced our latest machine translation systems. And the progress we made in the last year uh, was more than the progress we had made in the previous 10 years combined uh, in terms of the quality improvements. So 
we are approaching human translation level quality. And you know, so everywhere we look, the scale at which machine learning is progressing uh, is really, uh, really uh, important. The reason it's important for uh, the digitization of the German economy you're talking about, you know, one of the things we are working on and others are working on as well is to provide machine learning as a platform uh, so that uh, you know, every industry can use it within their context, with their own data, and, and develop new insights. And I think that will be critical to revolutionizing the uh, German industry over time. I know that also uh, at Deutsche Telekom for quite some years is working uh, on these uh, topics and uh, first products already incorporate uh, artificial intelligence. Look, I think yeah, there might be some business guys, entrepreneurs um, uh, here in the room. And question yourself whether you're using artificial intelligence or machine learning in your business already today. How many of you are using that in your operations? So what you see, it's just a few people who are just, this is a mega I forgot to raise yeah, my hand. Yeah, I, I know, <laughs> you know, I, but you know, nobody questioned that, you know. <laughs> we all followed, um, uh, you know, AlphaGo and um, uh, let's say the deep mind acquisition on that one, but I think, there's no excuse for German entrepreneurs or for German companies not using artificial intelligence in their, in their services to make their business more productive and more smarter. And that is true for Deutsche Telekom as well. And what we are doing is, um, uh, for instance, we are working on um, artificial intelligence in combination with the speech uh, recognition uh, for our uh, customer service centers. There are certain functions, you know, where we could use, you know, um, a voice, a machine, a robot, you know, to answer questions. If, if they're not answering all the things, we're handing it over to, uh, to the people. We are having this in the labs. The second thing where we test uh, artificial intelligence is the way how we rate data center. I know that Google is doing that as well uh, with the TPU system and other things. Uh, so we are doing the same um, so that automatically the data centers are steered by robots. Exactly. The third one is we steer our networks. We know now from artificial intelligence how the traffic in the network is developing. There might be you know, traffic jams coming, and that moment the cell is, empty, is full. It's fully loaded, and you do not get a connection. So how could you organize your traffic that automatically the antennas then are focusing on these areas, and in the evening they are focusing on the areas in the home? So this kind of you know, recognition is taking place. And the most interesting project at Deutsche Telekom with regard to artificial intelligence is the following. You know, every year we have this déjà vu, this täglich grüßt das Murmeltier. I don't know what that is in English, but uh, the so-called budgeting and planning process. And we have now um, a, a program, um, artificial intelligence running, who is doing this planning process. And we will see whether this system could anticipate what the business is looking for. We give them all the data which we have in the company, and this machine, this, this, this um, system, sh this algorithm, should understand what is going on and should tell us how, let's say, the, nu the numbers could look mm -hmm. like next year. Yeah. I think the, uh, that's a, a very interesting development. And another, I think, for uh, the com consumers, very important trend is that not only on our smartphones we have digital assistance. Mm -hmm. You have it with a new uh, Pixel. Of course, Apple had it with Siri, but even Samsung introduced lately also such assistance. But I think one step further are systems which come really into your home. Uh, Amazon uh, gave a start, now you have Google Home, and I think this is also very interesting for Deutsche Telekom, because eventually you have one hub in your home and you can ask for services. You don't have to fiddle around any longer with all the apps, because you don't go from app to app, but you speak to one central hub in your home. So what do you think about this trend? I mean, you know, I think of this as, uh, you know, we are shifting from a mobile first to an AI first world. I think for users, computing will be there, as you talked about, in the context of their daily lives. Uh, they will be able to interact with it more naturally, and it'll be highly intelligent. And uh, I, think, I think these systems will make a big difference. And you know, Tim talked about applications of AI, including data centers, and how you know, you know, we have tried it, and it saves about 40% in cooling costs already. But imagine running it on the German electricity national grid one day and being able to save right. uh, energy there. And so 
you know, I think we will use these things to one day even tackle important problems like climate change uh, and so on. So I think it's really important to make progress here. So where do you see the biggest opportunities for Germany in the digital economy? And what are the prerequisites? From your point of view, it's interesting to see outsiders. You, you come from the States and India, and how do you see the I mean, chances for uh, Germany especially? Uh, growing up in India, you know, we grew up admiring German engineering and the precision and, and, the, and the excellence here. And so I think it's, it's a unique opportunity to transform your economy. Uh, to me, the foundation is education, and, and I think the focus, focus of the summit is very appropriate. I think particularly digital skills and starting at a young age. Uh, you know, we've been very pleased to partner on a few initiatives with the support of uh, Deutsche Telekom and others, including the government. Uh, you know, we've been involved with the Open Rob Roberta project since uh, 2014, and we're going to continue our commitment there. It's really exciting to see something which involves uh, helping third graders, including the Calliope microcontroller project. It's particularly important to see girls being educated, and I think that's very important. Uh, when we have done digital skills training, uh, we see great impact from it. Uh, in Germany so far, we have done projects in which we have trained over 250,000 people, and we are going to double down. Uh, in 2017, we are opening uh, three physical training centers uh, in uh, Munich, Hamburg, and Berlin. And so anybody in Germany can come there and get several hours of free training. And so, you know, a small part from our side, but I think to see the focus and to do it here uh, yeah. is really exciting. I think Tim already mentioned a very important sector where Germany is very strong. This is a kind of business administration, controlling, financial planning, and so on. <laughs> and I think with this new era of uh, really computers being able as cognitive systems to understand data, because before we had only the digital you know, storage, transformation, uh, also transmitting data in digital form, but not really software systems which can capture the content. And I think this is new and very important for all your business, understanding text, images, video. So what do you think, uh, especially for your own company and Germany as a whole, uh, Tim, as opportunities here in this area? L let me maybe um, um, address one topic you right. mentioned earlier. This idea about artificial intelligence and what that means for the so-called app exactly. usage. And it's interesting to hear um, Sundar's you know, comment on that one because you know, I found out that you know, I'm doing Google you know, uh, pff, every six minutes. What's going on in the world? What's going on with Deutsche Telekom and the like? And I always get more than one result. But honestly, I do not want to have more than one result. I want just one result. Right. I want the one result I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, you know, the internet as it was in the past is not going to be the internet in the future. It's going to be the single answer which right. is tailored to me personally. And what we need for that one, you know, I do not want to know, you know, how many planes are flying from Hamburg to Berlin. But I want to know the plane which I use normally yeah. and which is fitting to me. Is this world going into a world where we do not have all the varieties and all the apps? I have 70 of them. <laughs> are we coming to the best search? Is one? Yeah. Is that the way where we're going to? Uh, yes. I, I think I, it's, a, it's a good question. I think there are two modes users will have. Uh, there are times they will have qu questions and they want the exact answer. But there are many times we see users want to explore. And so there are these two modes we see. And so part of it is doing both well. And so there has to be a mode, be it news or everything, exposing people to a diverse, uh, uh, range of interests and stories, and I think we need to get both of it right. Yeah. But uh, I can tell you that we have already projects, both with Google and with Telecom, where DFK works on the next generation. We say we need not only the search engine, as you say, but we need an answering engine, and this is what yes. Tim just yes. said, from search engine to uh, to uh, answering engine, but I uh, agree completely that uh, there are occasions where you want to have mm -hmm. uh, a search engine exploring, but I think Google already is on the way to be an excellent uh, also uh, answering engine. But yeah, yeah. Coming back to your question, um, what I think Germany needs and what Deutsche Telekom needs as well, I think all components for the digital 
digitalization is are available already. Right. We have that. Um, uh, I think there are two things where we have to focus on. One is data, and the second is skills. On the data side, we do not share data in Germany. If I have a company, I have my data, you know, I'm not sharing that with somebody. You know, that is mine. And we, we do not share things, you know. But we need an economy where we are open on sharing that. Open platforms where everybody could participate on, not on private information. We mm -hmm. always have to protect the privacy. Mm -hmm. But we have to build platforms where data is a common good, that everybody could participate on that one. The systems will then work on that one, and they will tailor the solutions for me personally. We should not be afraid of sharing uh, anonymized or uh, uh, pseudonized data. This is the one thing which I think we have to address in the IT summit here uh, for the next one. We should not be afraid about big data. Big data is a gift to make our society better and, uh, and faster. And the second thing is, I think, skills. And, uh, you know, we missed this one part on the introduction on our, on our product here. Yeah, but uh -huh. <laughs> to be honest, um, we, as Deutsche Telekom, we found out that with the Telekom Stiftung that we have a problem in our schools. Mm -hmm. Our teachers are not capable to educate our kids for the digitalized society. And we have to enable teachers in the way that they could you know, talk about these things which, are, which matter in the future. And secondly, what we have to do is we have to bring the kids into these opportunities more in a playing kind right. of part than in a threatening uh, uh, approach. And this is why, um, why Google, uh, Deutsche Telekom, together with the government, you know, we are launching this product, which is nothing else than Internet of Things. Right. The kids could program it, the kids could work on it, and in every school class, in the third school class, this thing is going to be available. And I think that's a big step yeah. of bringing this digital world in a kind of playful world, mm -hmm. playful way, into the school. So that is, I think, the... Uh, the thing which we which we wanted to announce as well here on the. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Hutkins, for taking the initiative together with others. And uh, the reason why Mr. Pichai is here today is not only because uh, we really like to discuss uh, about artificial intelligence with you, we also like to thank Google for uh, giving 500,000 euro to this initiative. And this is why I would like to say for the German government, thank you very much that you gave the money and we can um, get it to all the kids in the schools in Germany. Yeah. Thank you. I think we come to an end uh, right now. My very last question is, and, and I think uh, uh, Mrs. Supris, as our state secretary already addressed it, uh, many policy makers are here in the audience. So what are your key requests? I mean, you already donated something. What would be your request to the policy maker? Just briefly at the end. Uh, I think very briefly, I, I think the focus on digital skills is incredible to see. I, you know, I, I, I've rarely seen at a country level uh, this kind of a focus. And these are long-term initiatives which will, uh, which will uh, you know, have a lot of impact. Uh, I think Tim's point around data, as well as overall thinking about regulation in a balanced way, uh, you know, regulation plays an important role, but to drive innovation forward, you need to take risks as well. So thinking about that and balancing it, I think, I think it's very, very important. And finally, I would say infrastructure matters a lot. So for me to hear the focus on, you know, driving better bandwidth and high-speed connectivity, both on wire wireless and wired, I think it's going to be a foundational thing for the digital economy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank for you. The discussion. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Ja, vielen herzlichen Dank an äh, alle Beteiligten, allen voran natürlich Sunder Pitschei, auch an Walster. Vielen herzlichen Dank für die Moderation und natürlich an Brigitte Zypries, die jetzt hier ganz schnell eingesprungen ist und an Herrn Höttges. Wir machen jetzt an dieser Stelle eine ganz kurze Pause. Sie merken schon, wir sind hier so ein bisschen im Verzug, haben jetzt nur noch sieben Minuten Zeit. Ich bin mir nicht ganz sicher, wie das jetzt geregelt wird. So oder so können Sie den Saal auf dieser, auf dieser Seite hier verlassen. 
Wir treffen uns auf jeden Fall um zehn nach wieder, denn die Kanzlerin, ich hatte das gerade gesagt, ist bereits ähm, eingetroffen und dann sehen wir uns wieder mit den Ansprachen von der Kanzlerin und auch vom Bitkom-Präsidenten. Bis gleich.